You're listening to The Incomparable's Total Party Kill podcast, in which a group of friends play Dungeons and Dragons on the internet for your amusement. This is episode 173, posted February 2019. Hellbent for Orc Leather. Right, so to remind you, cut into the cavern wall is a small but strong looking door of iron plates about five feet tall and four feet wide, heavy rivets, studded surface, and a tarnished silver rune, which you, I believe, identified as Jurgen's smith mark, gleams on the door's rusted face. You got a rusty face. Well, adventurers, this is what the adventuring life is all about. We may be the first living souls to cross this threshold in many a decade. Uh... I don't, you know, they, they, these these dwarves seem to have taken their craftsmanship very seriously, so we should, uh, probably there will not be very many organic creatures out to kill us, but we should be on the watch for, uh, I don't know, booby traps? Who's DMing this? Because I'm feeling some DM vibes from Tony right now. No, that's just, <laughs> it's in my blood. It's my a God. bard. It's that a bard was spurious. Thing. That was in character. Oh, in I a see. way, a bard is like the dungeon master within the game in that I'm a storyteller. Aha. It's the okay. game within the game. Yeah, yeah I, w- I sometimes I wish there was a voice for Spurious because then I could tell the difference between Tony and Spurious. There is no difference. There is no difference. <laughs> Whoa! He is Spurious. Someone's Whoa. getting too into their character. Uh, all right. So you've unlocked the door. Beyond yep. uh, lies a very. Uh, I don't know if I did. I already revealed this. Beyond lies a very steep staircase. Uh, that leads up. All right, let's. Uh, Shall we? Do we? Spirits just talked about checking for traps, so I, I did, friend. Mm-hmm. I know, but I like stairs. I thought you like Spurious beds. rolls a nineteen on perception. Elevore rolls only an eleven on perception. I I'm also excited that these stairs goes 13. up and not down. Isn't that nice? Well, yeah, can we 16. know for sure? Because those one stairs couldn't tell if they're going up or down. Yeah. These, <laughs> Also, maybe maybe they change halfway. You never oh, know. Oh God! This is the oh thing. no! It's Willy yeah, Wonka's right. chocolate factory. Uh, all right, you. Ooh. None of you seem to detect any traps or uh, anything unusual about these stairs. Okay. They seem well made. They seem, um, you know, Bruldish looking at the stone cutting because mm-hmm. that is your expertise. Yeah, um, it is. You would notice these are these are well worked stairs. They're very professionally carved. Um, this this looks like dwarven handiwork to you to a T. Yep. This is. Starting to feel like, well, what would be home if it wasn't entirely <laughs> ransacked by orcs? Hey, you some know. things never change. You win some, you lose some. All right, so let us Up retire to a new map. Woo-hoo. A whole new map. The stairs end at the entrance to an octagonal chamber. The floor is inlaid with cracked, dusty blue tiles, and the walls are dressed with polished marble. Large doors of iron-bound oak exit to the northwest and northeast. Three cast bronze statues, almost 10 feet tall, stand by the west, north, and east walls. Each depicts an armed dwarf. The eastern and western ones carry axes and shields. The center one is armed with two axes. The ceiling rises in a dome almost 30 feet above the floor. And from somewhere, faintly in the distance, you can hear what sounds like the ringing of hammer on anvil. (gasps) Do I recognize these dwarves or the symbols or anything in particular? They seem kind of generic to you, if anything. Okay. Um, I'm going to step up over the doggy. Step up? So the dog's between my legs, and I'm sort of petting it as I roll... 21 on perception. I'm just doing a look around. Cool. Seeing what I see. Yeah, uh, all right. Idea. So um, you think that the sound of hammering is coming from the, uh, the east. Okay. That's um, the biggest thing that you can uh, determine just by sort of checking out the mm-hmm. room. If you want to look more at a specific area or thing, uh, what I would know. L- Oh okay. God! Um, I want to investigate the statues. Yeah, okay. that's what I was gonna say. Investigation, but like, right, do we need I'm... to be closer for that? Probably. Uh, I am not proficient in investigation, so I wonder if someone else should. All right, so um, Elavor, you also happen to notice a couple things about the floor. The dust is somewhat disturbed. 
and you think you see some like small like scratches uh in in front of some of the doors but it's like kind of hard to tell okay um can i what is the what are the closest scratches to me um they're the ones to the so basically it's hard to tell from where you are right now but you can kind of see some like scratches towards um sorry i lost my thing towards up here towards like the doors here, okay. Here, um, back here. Are, will anyone be upset if I walk in a little bit? No. I mean, if you want no. me to go first, I can. I don't mind going first. Um, I just, if, I, if anyone was going to be like, you set off a trap, you monster. I'll back uh, you up. I'll follow you. Excellent. So I'm just going to go here. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to roll an investigation check to look closer at the scratches that I can see. Okay. 21. Yeah, they look like, you know, almost like somebody had, like, smashed some metal on, you know, like, scratched the floor with something metal. Like a weapon or... Wow, wow. So you roll But not like the statue was in front of the door. And all and, you and find out is dragged. that somebody dropped metal on the floor. They didn't drop metal. They dragged <laughs> it along and gouged it, which uh, is okay. weird. Uh, I'm going to look at this I, statue. Oh, before you guys get any closer, is it sure. possible those gouge marks look like they were caused by statues that animate? Because statues are bad. Oh, God. I don't like statues that animate. I or feel at least okay about swing. these statues because they're dwarfs. Okay, mm, Broldish. Broldish you can go hug, hug a statue and see if you can find anything I'm going to hug this statue. Well, not literally. I'm going to uh, hug it. And by High hug, I mean look at it very closely and see if I notice anything about it or recognize it. Uh, right. Okay, I need an investigation check if you're looking at the statue. I am. Um, what is my investigation? It's probably a minus. It is. So that's 11. Okay. Um, so you can tell there's a small line. Uh, which, uh, which statue were you looking at? The one on the right that I'm standing right next to. Okay. You can tell there's a small line in the arm holding the axe. Like... Line down the arm, line around it? Like a, a line, uh, basically a seam. A seam. So, so like the, hand, the whole hand could come off? It could move. So that's like basically, you know, around the... Yeah, around the joint. Okay. Not oh. like the entire arm is going to split in half. Okay. No, no. But, no, but like it could pivot and swing. Art- or articulation, gotcha. let's call okay. it. Okay. Yeah. All right, this I will is, point that out. upgraded from statue to action figure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Try... Pulling it? What? <laughs> Brian doesn't Let's play D&D very long. Are you yeah. surprised yeah. that that's, that's Bellaman's advice? Bellaman. Should not yeah, that's you. Bellaman's advice. Oh, Bellaman. Poor sweet summer Bellaman. Oh. <laughs> uh, sweet summer Spurious, can you mage hand some, some fondling of this statue, please? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. This, this is, is not a okay. Show. That's not okay. What do you mean? I think we should back away. I- Glenn's kids. I'm sorry, but fondling is like light touching of the statue in a way that messes around with the seam that's all i'm suggesting all perhaps right. we should back away uh, before yeah why that don't happens. you two back up here i will uh, gladly I move back in 30 feet of the statue and use a mage hand i greet my mage hand send meiji over there meiji is going to try and uh make the arm move on the seam um okay so the mage hand can we determined exerts about 10 pounds of pressure yeah yep. that may not be sufficient yeah, it, it like hangs on the arm and it's like <laughs> All right. It's only also in one hand, so you know yeah. it's kind of. Do you get a sense that it like was maybe starting to move a little bit? We could tie a rope around it and pull from a distance. Ooh, I like that. Uh, it's hard to tell. That I mean, the mage hand is not super strong. The mage right, hand's ma- gonna go over hand. and just poke the other statues in case anything happens. There. <laughs> Nothing oh, happens idea. when it pokes the statues. Can, can I hand some rope to the mage hands and can it? Sure, tie... it could up to ten pounds of rope. A lot of All right, just so one end. I just wanted Meiji to go tie the uh, rope around the, there. And yeah, I'll ties pull. the rope onto the hand. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. So strength check. Mage hand knows three basic knots. I'm uh, <laughs> Broldish, and I will both uh, pull on the rope. That should be plenty of strength. Okay, so yep. give me a well, Broldish. If you're maybe. doing the main strength check, you give yep. it a strength check, and then Elavor, give me a check to aid her. Okay, and what do I roll to do roll an strength. aid? It's the same thing. Oh, just okay. uh, you'll you'll give her a bonus if you succeed. Gotcha. Oh my god! You wow. did not succeed. Well, I rolled twenty three. Nice. So. All right. Um. So you pull and you see the arm on that statue like, like move about halfway, creaky. Like it doesn't want to go. It's clearly being held back by something. Um, Can but I yeah, roll for you WD forty? You get the impression that essentially that's that that arm and the axe could drop, and that would line up pretty nicely with the scoring on the floor. 
Ah. So maybe if somebody steps in front of those doorways, they then get they get chopped. chopped. So can we pin Also, I'm them just kind of back? noticing on the map, I don't know if this is character information or not. It does look like there's something strange behind that suspicious statue. Yeah, I saw that too, but I didn't know if we saw that. <laughs> I didn't know if our characters saw that. Um, I was Cuz yeah, there is like a the to behind the one statue is like a light gray bar that is not present um I on can, the other two. I can clarify. Some of that is just the um kind of a weird Just way that coloring. this looks okay that's fine but here i'll uh i'll take a look like that it's, it's just like i don't know how the uh coloring quite mm -hmm. works but stone could we have the mage hand tie the rope to the door handle and pull the door Ooh. open from back here and and uh, out. i mean the mage hand could just open the door oh yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> the rope thing is so much yeah. more fun though. look look <laughs> players Dungeon master to player here. You don't use, need, need to use rope for everything. Braldish, Braldish is not very bright. She probably shouldn't have come up with those ideas All in right. the first place. Braldish, That's I'm just going to hold on to your rope for the rest of the adventure. <laughs> no. No, it's, everyone should have rope. It's, it's as a basic heavy as you are. It's a basic safety <laughs> tool. All right, uh, so uh, what are you doing? Mage hand? Door? Uh, so that Dan will probably note that I have to get within 30 feet of the door to mage hand it. So I can't make it. You're, already, you're already within 30 feet. Is that true? Which door are you Six doing? The squares. one in the northeast? All right. Yeah. yeah. Northeast door. Mage hand. All right. That so the mage hand pulls open that door and both the axes on either side from the statues clang loudly to the floor in a, in a slice that probably would have taken someone's head off. All right. Do they reset after a little bit? Nope. They, um, they are still there. Okay, so they've been triggered. Ooh, then do the um, other one. Yeah, I'd do the other one and see if the other statue activates. Yeah, so you pull open the same door, same thing happens, the two That's axes That's why the statue the in the middle had two axes. Correct, and they both, yeah. like, uh, slice down. Um, something interesting, right. though, you'll notice yeah. when Are you the doors open, open? those doors, uh, there's nothing but blank stone walls behind them. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, they're not even, like, closets? Nope, they're just, they're just blank stone walls. All right. Well, doors are really doors. welcoming. <laughs> Okay, so now that we now that we've established that there is this weirdness behind that statue, can we investigate that closer? Uh, I'm gonna I mean, come here. Unless this is the forge, which this does not seem like a forge. There's got to mm -hmm. be somewhere. I mean, there's got to be somewhere off of here other than these. I rolled a twelve know. on investigation. Uh, you see a not stone great. wall, um, but. Yeah, you I would like roll oh. me a someone roll me a perception check too. That was an eight. Sixteen. You you feel like there must be a way out of this room, but none of you are yeah. quite picking I mean, we up. Oh, I'm I'm Bellaman. Yeah. Bellaman, wake you up. Roll in perception for us. Yes. Use uh. your young dragon eyes. What? There's there's a tile floor, yeah, there's statues, 16. there's doors 16. that don't go anywhere. There's gotta be something going on here. Um, Maybe if we give the statues a muffin. So I will say you guys did notice a faint, you, as you're like casting around, you do obstruct a little bit. Elevor's cloak is like swirling around the floor, like disrupting some of the dust. Mm -hmm. But you did think you caught sight of a trail leading in that direction. And you were pretty convinced that there is something happening to the east. Yeah, um, we hear it. Yeah. So um, Give me a, let's see, somebody go up there and, and give me another, uh, who's taking a closest look here? Elavor has, I'm I super can... close. All right, Elavor, you sort of like squint a little harder and give me a perception check with advantage. You've, All right, you've seen that some, I can do. You've sort of picked up some trail there. Oh my, a 13, why? <laughs> this, okay, I'm really, Elavor like rests right, his head against the wall die and is now. like, I'm going to uh, look at it uh, with, uh, do I get it? advantage or something you're i get to double my dwarf. perception bonus you're a dwarf for... you can take a closer look i'll give you a little bonus all right so well, that's not the greatest roll 13 <laughs> which yep. is what elevore got twice <laughs> yep uh bellamin is like i don't know what you guys what the problem is and he like leans against the wall and a secret door <laughs> Swings open. No way. Uh, and thanks to roll twenty for uh, showing my stupid. 
I think the lighting effect gave it away or something. Yeah, it, it's ah. that there's a, it doesn't, the line I think doesn't quite mm -hmm. line up. Um, I'm trying to figure out if it actually has a thing here. Well, I mean, the artwork even, I, I don't even think it's okay. that. Because like, I was ignoring the fact that there was that. But <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the oh, artwork that itself was, yep. shows Reference that. acknowledged. Yep. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and behind is a stairway. Do we need to roll like a scoot check? Um, you're good. You're good. Uh, there's a flight of stone stairs leading upwards. I like going up. All right. I'm going to take a look at the base of these stairs. Good idea. Fine dwarven craftsmanship. These aren't goblin stairs. Yeah, with a seven perception check? Or... Uh, yeah, they're stairs. You're pretty yep. sure you know how to use them. Okay, then I'm going to. I'm going to use them. All right, so you walk up the staircase, and there's a door at the end. I listen. So, Bruldish, when you cross the halfway point uh, in the staircase... Me. Yep, back up, folks. <laughs> uh, you hear what sounds to you like a loud voice yelling in Dwarvish. Oh, what's it saying? Um, so because you are a dwarf, you, of course, you know, yeah. uh, are easily able to understand it. Uh, but instead, you hear basically... Um, what's so strange is you actually kind of see, like, some part of the staircase mold itself almost into, like, a mouth and yells in Dwarvish, Alert! Alert! Intruders! Approach! I yell in Dwarvish. Wait, never mind, false alarm. <laughs> if I actually had inspiration, I would give it to you right now. That was lovely. Even if it doesn't work, that was lovely. I, I'm sure it won't. Not even remotely going to work. Um, <laughs> uh, so there you come to the door up here. It's a stone door. It's carved with a glowering dwarf's face. Sup? I say hello It to the doesn't face. say anything. Well, then you have to speak friend, yeah. I said it in Dwarvish. Uh, um, okay. I'll, it, is there like disarm traps or something? I don't know what we're supposed to do. Well, we do don't even here. know if it's trapped. So let's look at the door. Six. It's a door. You're pretty yeah, sure you see, know how they makes, work. It makes sense to have me go first for, you know, damage soaking purposes, but for looking at stuff, maybe not the best. All right. I'll roll, I will roll perception as well. I don't know what it's going to do, though. I Oh, why did I click it? Why do I keep doing that? I need to stop using this roll 20 thing. So yeah, does, does Elevor think this door might be trapped or should I just... Uh, you it? can't detect any traps. Is okay. it still shouting or did, was it just that? It wasn't time? the door shouting, it was the staircase. It was the staircase. But the door has a frowning face on it too? It does. Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. a thematic motif. Oh, okay. This one doesn't move. Dwarves frown a lot. It's just, it's a thing. Do we still have another key? No, yeah. but we haven't no. even tested to see if this door is locked. Oh, is God, you're locked? right. Oh, my God. I'm going to try the door. I'm sorry. Uh, the door is not locked. Well, You want to open it? You want it. me to open it? Friend! I, oh, yeah, friend. go ahead. And, you can open it or I can open it. I don't care. I, I do want to open it, though. I'll open it. All right. The door swings open, revealing a very large room. Oh, Ooh, my goodness. Pretty. So... Hmm. This enormous hall is lined with 10 great pillars carved into the forms of giants and dragons, and they support a vaulted ceiling high above. Guttering orange torches set in sconces along the walls illuminate the room, and a mighty throne sits on a dais at the opposite end. The walls were once covered with tile mosaics, but they've been smashed and defiled by graffiti. <gasps> no! Tiny fragments of tile litter the floor. You can see five other exits... A small fire smolders on the floor before the dais where six sleeping pallets lie empty, surrounded by packs and supplies. The sound of hammers ringing on iron comes from beyond the doors hmm. to the south. Let me uh, elucidate uh. some more of these uh, entrances and exits here. There's a staircase uh, down there. There is a little antechamber leading to a door up here. Another one over here. I don't like it. Yeah, there's a lot. Um. So, so as you wait, stand are there, those beds. Yeah, the, yes, sleeping pallets. No, I put out my arms to stop Elevore <laughs> from running past me. To Thank go you. Toss Thank the you beds. for remembering my my bed mm -hmm. problem. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it's a benefit. Crazing. Uh. So as you're standing there and sort of taking it in, 
Mm-hmm. I'm very sad about the smashed mosaics and the defilement of a great yeah, dwarven stronghold. Yeah, in fact, stronghold. The, the closer you look, you see that some of them are crude epithets written in, in orc, <gasps> insulting dwarves and their ancestry. I'm actually going to put an orc, my hand on your it. shoulder, Broldish, like, I'm so sorry, kind of kind of gesture, like, oh, I see you sort of re- being very sad and, and angry. Yep. Um, so you are taking this in, and you are suddenly surprised by a harsh voice calling from the shadows of the pillars. Go back the way you came. This is the only warning you'll get. Is it in common? Uh, it is in common. Yes. What if we ask very nicely for a second one? Uh, I'm Did gonna... you actually say that? No, don't say no, that, No, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> a dear, dear friend. Um, we are no we... friend of yours. You've come into our home. Kindly remove yourselves. Um, I get even madder when I hear our You should probably do some talking in case it is dwarves. If it is orcs, we're just going to burn them. I'm going to, yeah, I don't know who it is. Can I, like, do I need to do something first before I roll persuasion, or should I start by rolling persuasion? Roll persuasion and tell me what you're going to say. Or vice versa. Tell me what you're saying. Oh, I got a 19. Um, I don't know. Oh, that was perception before. So I got a 19 in persuasion. Um, What I want to do, well, I guess I'll just say it. Um, It should be clear to you that our ability to access this area uh, speaks to our respect and understanding of the way that this forge is set up. We're not here to hurt you. In fact, we've been trying to clear out this forge of the evil that lurks here. Evil? I'm guessing this guy is the evil. <laughs> evil yeah, that he lurks be. here? We, we take care of our own place in the forge. You're, you're the intruders. Uh, we... We are just trying to conduct our lives here, and you come barging in, and Maybe without even haven't... any sort of suitable offering for disturbing us. Maybe you haven't been like outside and about in a while. Like I could understand it's pretty cozy back here, but there are quite a few intruders, and we just came around to 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 you know check things out and make sure whoever lives here was okay. The rest of the caves are of no concern to us. This is our home. Did you not see the door locked? Yeah, we did, and in fact, we were able to gain access because, again, we have respect and understanding of what's going on here. And I Ta, thieves I, I gain you... access from respect and understanding. I just assume you picked the lock. So you said you had uh, you, you mentioned an offering. Um, you, you feel that we have not uh, done our proper respect for you and your culture. It's rude to come into somebody's home without some sort of gift or pleasantry. Uh, Elevore looks back, like kind of making eyes at them. Like, can we figure something oh. out here? Like, I say, all oh, as these foul, filthy orcs have come in to to a dwarven home and defiled it. And I look around the room and I point at the mosaics and I say, it seems that that has been happening here as well. Obviously, the people who are living here don't have a whole lot of respect for this place either. Ooh. How loudly are you saying oh, that? Really loudly. <laughs> Well, there we go. That was that was that's a thing. <laughs> that was diplomacy. All right. Um, well, uh, a couple javelins hurl out from behind the pillars at Broldish. <laughs> okay. Because these Does people are not orcs? going to take well to being insulted. Are they, are they dwarves? Can we even see them yet, or are uh, we just still hearing voices? You cannot see them quite yet. I Darn will it. tell you what's going to happen. So, uh, javelin attack. Where is my javelins? Where are my javelins? Uh, all right, javelin attack. Uh, Eleven. Mm-mm. And I batted it aside. Uh, five. They clatter. Cold, Can't even like, bat that one aside. Ladder to enough. the floor. Um, and that. I say, are you quite finished? <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, the first sort of attack of theirs. So let's uh, let's go into initiative here. Uh, I don't want to hurt these people. We Not don't even yet. know what these people are. If they are orcs, I am hell bent for orc leather. Yeah, that, I agree. But like, I don't want to hurt them without knowing. I Ooh, guess is what I'm saying. Crit. I think everybody should just stay behind me until we figure out what's happening. <laughs> I don't know. 
I, uh, you, uh, your character has, um, a little bit of river mouth at the moment. (laughs) Well, I mean, if they're orcs, yeah, I, I'm not just going to keep standing here, but we don't know. So Elevore is going to get to go first. Okay. Um, I am going to use my, my turn off. Uh, oh, I almost said a bad word. Um, I'm going to use my turn to try and continue to talk. Um, listen, listen, uh, it it should be clear to you now at this point that my, uh, my companion here, Broldish, uh, very much cares about dwarven culture and is, is respective of the things that it has much respect for the things that are going on here. In fact, it was a, a moment of passion that caused Broldish to, to reach out in such a rageful way. We don't want to fight with you. We just want to help. What can we do to convince you of that? And that was a six that you rolled on persuasion? Yeah. Yeah, they're not really receptive <laughs> to listening anymore. Okay. You had your chance. Uh, all right. So, uh, Elevor, you doing? You anything? had your chance, and you bruldish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, thank oh, you, no. thank you, Brian. Thank did you, you <laughs> um, did you want to do anything else on your turn? Um, 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 um let me see. Uh, what does that count for? The at the bottom. No, no, sorry. What does what does my what I just did like? Oh. Do I still have an action or what do I have now? Yeah, I'll say you still have an action. That was an impassioned speech. Okay. Uh, is the f- is the fire pit in the middle there? Is that lit? Uh, I believe yeah. it is. Okay. Mm, it's smoldering, but there are also lit. some torches. It's eighty-five feet away. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, I I guess <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I don't know what to do. Um, you can you can, you can ready hold. an attack if you see somebody threatening. Okay, that's what I'll do. Um, I'm going to ready uh a produce flame attack. Um, so if if I see somebody threatening. You'll then throw some fire at him. I will throw some fire at What's them. What's the range on that? Uh th- oh, it's only thirty feet. Well, that's still I, like if somebody comes at us, that's still there we go. very okay. useful. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'll do. All right, Bellman, what are you doing? You're kind of in the back there, but you've you've kind of heard down the grapevine that things didn't go super well. <laughs> uh yes, I'm in the back, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. I would like to be in the room <gasps> to see if I can trigger something. Same. I'm going to cast shield on myself. Can you which move gives that me... far? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah. What's your speed? 30? Yeah, 30. Okay. Should I be so I think there? You can, I think there? you're there. I think you're closer to Broldish. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to take the brunt of whatever's going on and see what's happening. And I'm also giving myself plus 5 to AC until the start of my next turn. Uh okay, so did you wait to cast shield or something? Yeah, yeah, I cast shield. Got it. Uh, all right, I will be the target for anything that happens, and I can. Uh, you can see what happens when someone runs in, and uh, yeah. All right, Bellman has rushed into the room and put himself forward, shielding his friends with his either Very courage kind. or stupidity. It's unclear yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like there is some strategy in that casting the spell. All right, Imra. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Um, well, I, th- mm, so I can ready an action, but I can't, like, I wouldn't, what am I trying to ask? Could I, like, get my longbow out and knock an arrow and move, like, delay my turn to do all of that, or can no, I can't do the move. Mm-mm. No. Okay. Um, You'd have to move first and then ready the attack. <sighs> Please don't do that. Yeah, I don't want to go in there. So I guess I'm just going to ready my longbow in case 
someone comes within range and attacks one yeah. of us. I'm also going to say that. your your range is a little bit more limited because you're halfway down a staircase. Yeah. So mm-hmm. basically, they're going to have to kind of get like right in front of Broldish for you to have a shot. Okay. So just keep that, that in mind. Sense. If they yeah. rush right at you, you'll have a clear shot. But if they're still somewhere far back in the room, you just can't see them. Okay. I also want to point out, just reading the, the shield thing that popped up, Brian, you don't actually have to cast it because it's a reaction. So if something... Um, this is true. You can, you. you can cast it as a reaction to something being thrown oh. at you. That's, oh, why awesome. she, that's you. what makes shield awesome. Yep. So you, so can, you, can, you can just call me an agent. Of <laughs> you can retract that if you want and just hold that in reserve rather than wasting it on mm-hmm. something that may or may not happen. It's functionally cool. the same uh, thing. Yeah, I'll cast that when if something happens. All right, Imra's readying an arrow. Spurious, you're down at the bottom uh, and you're sort of hopping up trying to get a view of what's going on, <laughs> but it's unclear. Lots oh. of angry words being yelled back and forth. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I don't have a great idea. Well, you know, um, I guess I can't see anybody, which limits my ability to target things. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. how I'm feeling, too. I know, I feel like if the, the staircase was, was slightly uh, norther or souther on the map, we would be able to fit two of us Yeah. on it next to each other. Um, I'm going to wait. I'm just not going to do anything. I think there's nothing, there's no thing to do yet. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. All uh, right. Let me just look at this. Cool. All right. Uh, Bruldish. All right. I, I just say, show yourselves. Are you the filthy orcs that have, have infiltrated this once great stronghold? Or are, are you actually here like we are to help take it back and clear it out and make it the, the great glory it once was? That is quite the challenge. All right. So what happens now is you... So Bellamin, you get this weird feeling at sort of like the back of your neck. Like, mm, like when something is just like... Something seems kind of not right. Uh, a uh, figure suddenly appears in front of you. Ah! Yikes. Uh, and, and to clarify, can I see that? Uh, I don't think you can from okay. where you are because Broldish and Bellman are also in the way. A, a character okay. or a, a creature appears in front of you and attempts to stab you with a short sword. Shield! <laughs> All right, so... Indeed, I shield. That doesn't look like an orc. It doesn't look like an orc, does it? No. Nope. Uh, it is... So they were invisible, uh, which also, I believe, gives them... Uh, I don't remember if that gives you advantage. I think it does. It's not an orc, but it's also not a dwarf. Not, not a dwarf. Interesting. Uh, do I have to cast it, is it a no? before or after a roll? Uh, you can do it in reaction mm-hmm. to something happening. So you don't have to trigger it based on the thing appearing. You can trigger it based on the attack. Okay, I triggered it based on the attack. I didn't need to, but okay, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to say it had advantage on that because it was invisible. So 19, would that, would that hit your shield or no? Uh, that ties with the shield. That will hit. Dang. So it's going to do a total of uh, 11 damage because right. it managed to do a sneak attack. And then it is going to use an action to disengage. Shield helped everybody. Wow, it's got two actions. Uh, it doesn't have two actions. It has a cunning action. Ah. Am, is, is it still my turn? Did that ha- all happen on my turn? or? Uh, no, that happened on its turn. Okay. So it ran up. You made your proclamation speech. It ran mm-hmm. up and appeared in front of Bellman, tried to stab him, and then jumped back. And it says, we are no filthy orcs! And it, like, stands there looking at it. So you've got kind of a better view of it now. Mm-hmm. Um, and Do I recognize him? It, I mean, so you would definitely know what this is. Um, you, or at least you would have heard of them, if nothing else. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are called Durgar. Mm-hmm. They are... Also known as gray dwarves. Yeah, they're uh, they, spooky, spooky goth dwarves. Yeah, they live in uh, the underdark and other underground places that are like a little more in the deeps. Uh, they are mostly bald, have this sort of ashen gray skin, um, and they were once. Cool. You know, you would know the lore of them is that they were once enslaved by the Illithids, 
uh, and they manage to escape thanks to the help of the god, their god, Laduger, but it also kind of took its toll. The, their, their adherence to that god took its toll on them, and they are kind of a uh, gloomy, dour, pessimistic, suspicious um, group of people. They are very skilled as in, in sort of your traditional, a lot of your traditional dwarven arts like craftsmanship, but they don't take a lot of joy from it. What are the uh, relations between dwarves and Durgar? Um, as far as Durgar do tend to fight dwarves, but they're, they mainly make alliances when it's convenient. They're not particularly loyal or honorable in your traditional dwarven sense. Um, but uh, they do, you know, they, they recognize mutual self-interest. We'll put it that way. Okay. Cool. Uh, you also know they have a variety of somewhat strange powers that the dwarves don't tend to have. But mm-hmm. perhaps you will well, see yeah. more I don't necessarily that. want to fight them. Like, they're t- 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 Halo loves everybody. As far <laughs> as I'm concerned, they're just distant cousins. Mm-hmm. That's it. They and now that I know they're not orcs, the same way, I'm though. like, yeah, whatever. Um, all right, so from behind, let's see here. A couple more. Hey, you did exactly what I said. You showed yourself. Thank you. We're brethren. We don't need to fight. Although we really should clean up this place. <laughs> um, two more Durgar appear and hurl uh, additional javelins. Um, you also noticed something peculiar about these ones when they appear in that they look slightly different from the one that you just dealt with. These appear to be... Their beards are floppier. <laughs> Their beards are floppier. <laughs> um, oh, come on, roll 20. Like it's being blown up by a wind. Uh, they appear to be much larger than the uh, the, the first Duergar that stepped forward uh, to... Here we go. Like, larger. Whoa! Well, then. Uh, they hurl I guess another pair of javelins at you. Uh, one at Bellman, one at Broldish. Oh, reloading was great, because now I can't find anything. All right. Uh, javelin! That one said Broldish, 23. Oh, that'll hit. 11 piercing. 17 Bellman. That your does not shield, hit with my shield. Your shield is still in effect. Yes, uh, until the start of my yep. next turn. Yep. All right. So one javelin takes Bruldish in the shoulder and it says, How dare you come into our home and insult us for having defiled it? I, mean, I it didn't insult home? you for having defiled it. You treated us like it, orcs, wh- like monsters. Well, you were talking like one. Oh, yeah. That's going to oh. definitely <laughs> smooth things over. <laughs> Bruldish. <laughs> Uh, all right, we're around to the top. Elevor, there are some quite large Duergar and a smaller one hovering near Bellman. Elevor considers casting Hold Person on Broldish. <laughs> um, that, I don't know that that would make me shut up. Oh, darn. Uh, it says paralyzed. That includes your larynx. Well, I suppose. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, obviously. Um <laughs> I don't you could, know. You could just give me over as an offering people. of peace. Like, yeah. here, we'll take the mouthy dwarf and, and she's yours. Oh, I know what I'll do. Um, so you can see when I click, right? Like, you can see when I'm yep. doing that thing. Sorry. Yes. Is it making that thing? Right uh, now? Where are you? Because I can't see it. Oh, make sure you're it's on the right. It's a double click and hold. Tool. Ah, there we go. So you saw that then? I did. Yep. Okay, sweet. I would like to cast right there. Um, spike growth. Ooh, tell uh, us more. The ground is a twenty-foot radius. Oh, sorry. The ground in a twenty-foot radius, centered on a point within range, twists and sprouts hard spikes and thorns. The area becomes difficult terrain for the duration. When a creature moves into or within the area, it takes two d four piercing damage for every five feet it travels. The transformation of the ground is camouflaged to look natural. So any creature that can't see the area at the time the spell is cast has to make a wisdom check. So they can all see yeah. it. Um, so they can like move around. So they, it, show me my... with the uh, point where you centered that again. Might as well, well just draw it. Yeah, I was going to. Okay, if you want to draw it, I was going to put a square down. But if you can draw it and tell me where or whatever, whatever you want to do. 
let's see, it says a 20 foot radius. Okay, centered on a so point. So 40 feet, I believe. Oh, right. Oh, God. Um, okay, yeah. So I think the point will be, hold on, I got to. Like, What's your keep range my, on that? I'm just keeping my eye on it. Um, I have 150 feet range. Do on do it that. there? Wow. Yeah, I want so to do it. So 5, 10, 15, 20. I think that goes all the way. Let me see if this looks right. It should go to like almost all the way toward us and almost all the way toward them so, so that they sort of have to see. move into this barrier if they want to be closer to us. I don't know if this is quite exactly right. Uh, it should be taller. Taller, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let's see here. Let me just drag it up like this. How far? So it should be about 40 feet in each direction, right? Yeah. Is it taller still point. or one more, I think? Yeah. Yeah, two more. Can you make it go toward? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I wanted it to do. Except you don't want oh, Bellaman in it, do you? Well, Bellaman, sorry. Like, there's. I think that's... don't move. Well, <laughs> okay, well actually, he actually time. shifted up one uh, <laughs> yeah, to the right big... one, so that no, Bellaman no. is not in it. Yeah, well, it should be like this. My goal this... in the beginning was to do it sort of non-aggressively, so that nobody was in it when they first started. So I but... care. Yeah, yeah. Like I wanted yeah, them to be okay. outside of it, but that's not going to work. They're so. all. They're yeah. all in it. Yeah, because other otherwise we're all trapped in the stairwell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might. You might even want to do it one more back so that we have a little bit of room to maneuver. That's I don't true. know. It's up to you. Um. But. Uh. Yeah. Let's do it. Sorry, Dan. Can we scoot it one more? Like, or if you really wanted it to be as non-threatening as possible, <laughs> if it was, we, if it was so that they're all on the edge of it, you know, then they have the option to walk out of it. But then they could also get around it more easily. Yeah, I'll just put it there because, like, if they don't move, then it won't hurt them. <laughs> that's that's the motto I use. If you guys and stay like, still, I will not mm -hmm. hurt you. Mike, is it a concentration spell so you could tell them, like, I can make this go away at any moment, whatever, uh, or? It doesn't say. Okay. Um, like, it's, it's just a duration. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does say concentration, yeah. So you could dispel it any time. Yeah. Also, keep uh, in mind that any other spell that you want to cast at the same time... Uh, would you, undo it, right? Would undo it, Not, yeah. uh, No, I, th I think you can cast other spells. You just can't cast other spells that require, require concentration. concentration. Sorry. Oh, yes, gotcha. That's correct. Okay, well, I am going to go ahead. Now that I've done that, I'm going to say, listen... I know that we've got off to a bad start and some people have said some really not great things to you and I apologize Sorry. for that. I am not in I do not want to hurt you. Uh the, this 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 terrain that I've just laid down can be dispelled at any moment and as soon as we get to a place of peace, it will be dispelled. But I, you should know that if you walk within this area, you're going to be hurt. And it is not my intention to hurt you. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. I want us all to walk out of this alive because we're not here to fight you. They, we were here to get rid of the orcs. They seem, if anything, slightly more enraged by oh, the fact that you have come into it. our home and put spikes all over the ground. Yeah, this is, yeah, there's no there's no Your decorating style is you. not matching theirs. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right, Elvor. Enter your design. You, Elvor, you've yeah, clashes with our with our walls. Uh, They're just grumpy. There's nothing we can do. This is true. They are grumpy. Um, all right, Elvor. Anything else? Uh, I just shake my head. <laughs> all right, Bellman. There is a zone of spikes now, uh, as well as three. You got lots of ranged stuff. If I come here. And quarterstaff this boy. <laughs> will that? Will I be okay? Like, will that affect anything for me? I mean, you'll probably make him angry, but other than that, let's make him angry. Quarterstaff. Oh, that's a seven. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna hit him. Okay. Bonus. He's still angry. You kind of hit. It's like he hit him with a <laughs> stick on the arm, and he's like, "What?" <laughs> Well, Tap. if I didn't hit you, that means you're not going to attack me if I move back, right? Uh, are you no. doing that? Because he will totally take a swing at you. Hmm. What's the uh, disengage action? Is that all of my it's move? A full it's, yeah. it's a full action. It's a full action. Okay. Uh, so either you're going to stay there and get hit later, or you, oh God, uh, or you move and get hit now. Those are your options. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll move and get hit now. Okay. He's going to hit you with a short sword. It's not very short, is it? 18. <laughs> that hits. Nine piercing damage. I'm unconscious. 
Awesome. Also, you're I right. Hope you're still of, getting whacked right? with my quarterstaff. Yep. Was worth it. You hit him with the steroid and he stabs you and you fall to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bellman is down. Imra, uh, you hear like a grunt. No, you didn't make it no, that far. No, you don't get to move. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to move. Sorry. Oh, okay. Because you you uh, were knocked unconscious before you could step back. Uh, Imra, you heard a grunt and a strangled cry from Bellman uh, and you <laughs> suspect things are not going well, which is your team's usual MO. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I guess I'm, oh, I'm still on the ruler tool. I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to move to here. I'm going to have Androdite move behind this pillar. I don't think we're going to be able to reason with them. Are we agreed? I mean, can we just drag Bellman out of here? Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Door? There's no, I, I'm done. I'm resigned to kicking their tukuses. I'm just scared because we're out of spell slots and um, mm -hmm. everything. But I guess I'm going to try to hit um, the little one with my, with an arrow. Ooh, uh, 17. A 17 will hit. The, oh, okay. Here we are. Uh, uh, how much damage does that do? Mm, five. Okay. The Duergar looks pained. It takes an arrow in the shoulder, looks pained and affronted. And um, how many did I move? One, two, three. What is my move? I'm going to move over here um, by Androdite and hopefully be out of the way of the javelins. Maybe. Okie dokie. Um, Spurious. Yeah. Well, I guess we're doing this. So I'm going to scamper down the uh, stairs and break right. Uh, I think or I can up get the to... stairs. That's... Well, sorry. Up, up the stairs up and break right. And kind of take up position next to Bellaman's collapsed form. And I am going to lob a um, vicious mockery at the, uh, the Dorgar standing over his, uh, over Bellaman. Okay. Uh, so he needs to make a DC 10 wisdom save. Is that right? Take... That's not right. He, my spell <laughs> save is 13. So he needs to make a DC 13 Okay, um, and is it really it, just one d four damage? Yeah, it's a it's a cantrip because guess remember I used a lot of spell slots. Yep. All right, so a DC thirteen wisdom save you said. Mm -hmm. Oh, you having one of those days where I roll well. Did you roll with advantage? Uh, it's you know what it seems to be on by default. Gotcha. Uh, normally when I do that, I just take whatever the first thing is. Fair enough. Whether it's better or not. Um. All right. Well. I'm really hoping uh, Broldish is going to do a lot of great stuff. Uh, so is Broldish. <laughs> well, good news, Broldish, <laughs> you're up. Um, I will. And you know what? Uh, sorry, I'll do one last thing. <laughs> On my way past the stairs, I will give uh, Broldish my last Bardic inspiration. All right, I'll take it. I'm going to move up. Uh, next to Bellaman and the Durgar and try to attack it with my axe. That's what I'm going to do. So I shout, inhale his name! All right. Wait, and how is uh, attack. how is that spelled? Hela, H-E-L-A? No, no, the D, the D, the D creatures we're fighting. Durgar, D-U-E-R-G-A-R. I think those might be in um uh in the Iron Druid Chronicles. Possible. They're probably based on actual like mm -hmm. sort of under dark dwarves as it were. Yeah, there's a cre they're called Draugar. Um mm -hmm. and they are like wispy smoky. Oh, that's no, that's I, I think you're thinking of something that's slightly it's possibly similar but different. There is a creature called a Draugar. Um in this like too, in this ghost, game, yeah, uh, in in mythology, in like, oh I yeah, think they're yeah, yeah. Scandinavian. I want to say, yeah, they are, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I rolled okay. so terribly 
that uh, that even my bardic inspiration is not going to be helpful. So I'm going to save that. Um, All right. The spy seems gives like a smirk as you. I'm just lulling him into a false sense of security. He's feeling pretty secure. <laughs> Uh, speaking Fair. of which, it is his turn, mm-hmm. and the first thing that he will do, uh, oops, that's not, is this. <laughs> he looks down what? now, so basically, you see him, he kind of smirks at you, and then you see him almost, like, inflate to, tw- like, twice his size, and oh, now he's looking so down gross. on you, and he sort of smirks again, and then tries to stab you twice with a short sword. So judgy. Oh. Is it too late to bravely run away? Uh, he rolls a 10 and a 7, so neither of them land. <laughs> I smirk. He's up, having trouble adjusting to his new size. He like mm-hmm. kind of swings over your head. Yeah, and then he looks he looks angry at your smirk. Uh, the other two Duergar, so remind me, Elavor, what happens if they move? When they move, what happens is, you like this vamping I'm doing while I, do. I try to find it? I like it a lot. Uh, I think it's 1d4. Sure it is. Here we go. Uh, it's 2d4 piercing damage for every five feet. Oh, wow. <laughs> so like. Come yeah. on. Join us. Join the and fight. Oh, man. How many javelins do these guys have? Technically, check. isn't it 10 feet since they take up two squares every time they move? It's 10 feet. <laughs> no, they only move five <laughs> uh, no. feet. No. Feet at a time. So. Um, they are not telling me how many javelins these guys have, but I'm guessing it's not more than three or so. Um, but yeah, in order to get to me, they have to move five squares. Okay, one of them is going to hurl a javelin at you. We'll say it's his last. Uh, nine. That went great. Nope. The other one, so he would take five. Ten d four damage. Ten d four for going out. Oh, for going out! I thought he was coming at us. No, he's but... not. He's not suicidal. <laughs> uh, so I think that would be five feet. Um... 10 feet and then he'd be out so he'd basically take 44 is that right mm-hmm. all right here we go four one five it. three eight and four 12 nice ouch that was still pretty painful all right so he stumbles out but he's hobbling and kind of looking bloody he turns and hurls his last javelin oh, can he hit I think it's going to be a Broldish <laughs> still. She's the most Hi! visible target. <laughs> uh, here we go. I tried. A 10. Ugh. Nope. Yep. Clatters to the floor, missing you by a mile. Uh, Elevore, we're back around to you. You have very Alrighty. neatly made these guys hard to engage with. Yes, um, I am going to, let's see, so got, let me see. I'm going to move first up to the edge of my little dealie here. Uh, wait, hold on. I can go five. Six. Hold on, one sec. I do need to do some calculations. Math here. time. No, 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 math time. D&D, a game of cooperation, imagination, and math. Let's see, what is my speed again? Okay, I'm going to go here. Wait, now I need to move back to the movie tool. I'm going to go here. Okay. And then I'm going to use Do you have a my... movement to get that far? Yeah, I just I did the I, I did the measurement. Um and then I'm going to do uh I'm gonna use my last uh s- s- first level spell slot to cast Thunder wave to push that one that's right in the front, Oof. hopefully back, like farther into the soup. Yeah. So DC 13 uh, to get five damage and not be pushed. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to get 10 damage and be pushed in farther. Ugh, 15. Son of a gun. But they'll so five damage, five no damage. push. Okay. There's a loud noise and the... Duer, the Duergar winces, but it you know, doesn't seem to be too phased by it damage-wise. Sadly, I have no spell slots left to try to do my pushy attack either. So pushy, Roldish. Uh, Elevore, <laughs> anything else? Um, no, that's it. Bellamin, you are unconscious. Death save! I will, uh, I'll use my turn to heal you next turn, but Bellamin. Oh, thank you. I thought, yeah, I really thought I heard you say, I'll use my turn to kill you next turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's like, man, Bellowin, things have... This is, this is where we part ways. I need, you, I need your cut of the ruby. <laughs> Good night, yeah. Bellamin. Nice turn. Most likely kill you next turn. Uh, how did you do there? Uh, I got an eight. I failed. Oh, dear. <clears throat> All right. Imra, you are skirmishing behind a pillar over there. Yeah. Um... I guess I'll try to, I'll move over a couple squares. Um, I'm going to have Androdite move into the corner so she has better cover. And I'm going to shoot an arrow at um, Who are you shooting at? the recently embiggened one. Okay. <laughs> oh, critical fail. Um, so I'm just going to like move over back by Androdite again and hang out. Imra pops out, shoots an arrow, it goes wide, pops back in again. Spurious. There's an unconscious dragonborn in front of you. Well, hmm. Well, I made promises. So, um... <laughs> From beyond the grave over here, there's no pressure to keep there. your promises. <laughs> so let's cast a Cure Wounds on you. Um, I don't know if that's... It's a D8 plus my Charisma modifier, is that? And I'm, I I don't really have the spell slots to cast it. a 4. So you get 7 hit points... Uh, and it resets your death saving throws. So. Well, thank you. Yay! Please <laughs> cast something big and magical on your turn. If you're... Uh, I'll try. Whoa, that sounded really not good for your voice. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, I think I will take. I will move over here so where I'm. I feel like I'm more solidly in cover behind yep, this pillar. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Brildish, you're up. There's a giant Durgar in front of you. I recently. Reconscienced, reconscious, <laughs> un unconscious, Bellman, <laughs> un unconscious. You truly are a wordsmith. Unconscious. <laughs> All right, this this guy has author, gotten Dan Moore. has gotten on my last nerve. I am I'm going to take a vow of enmity against him. Oh man, this escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that means I gain advantage on attack rolls against Ooh. him for a minute. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then I attack him. That makes you, sense. sir, are on my enemy. I said good day, sir. You were very rude, and I didn't appreciate it. So, that is... Oh, thank goodness for that. Um, 21 to hit. That'll hit. Nice. That is eight points of slashing damage. That includes your vow? Yeah, the, the vow doesn't give me any uh, uh, additional advantage. damage. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. All right. You smack him with your axe, and he looks he looks wounded physically and, <laughs> and emotionally. And then I smirk at him again. Oh, man. There's the battle of the smirks happening over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's his turn. He will return the favor by okay. stabbing you twice with a short sword. I'm so scared. 17 and 13. Miss, miss. Oh. Smirk. Yes. Man, it's really making up for that whole Roper battle before. Um, all right. Close, though. The, this Dur- Oh, gosh. All right. This Durgar is going to also attempt to walk by. So he'll do the same thing, which also I think is 44 again. Mm-hmm. Micah, if you want to give him a damage roll. Let's see. Oh, it's 44? Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's right. see. I'm just gonna yes, 44 damage. Ten. Perfect. <laughs> That's what I heard last time, and I was like, 44 yep. is great. Four damage? <laughs> ten, 10 damage. All right. He, again, limps and hobbles down to this side. So that was 5, uh, hold on, I just see it. five 10, 15, 20. All right. He's kind of going to try to squeeze. So he's like a little jammed into this pillar here, but he's going to try to make his way past it. Um, so that'll cost him some extra squares of movement, but I think he can get to Elevore. But he can't attack this turn. He's just going to get up in his grill, stomping towards him angrily. Large <laughs> dwarf. Uh, this guy, gosh, not much this guy can do. Um, this guy's gonna start rummaging around the uh, the bed rolls, looking for something. Uh-oh. Oh no! Bed work. He's doing bed work. He's making the bed. Elvor, he's he's honing in on your territory. Yeah, yeah this is getting real serious. Uh-huh.